Intending to escape the heat on probably the hottest weekend of the year, we thought Santa Barbara right on the ocean would be a great choice. Labor Day weekend, a couple of years ago, we thought we learned our lesson. We went camping at Fillmore, California, at Kenny Grove State Park. That weekend, it was 115 degrees. And I remember as we were baking in our Airstream, looking at my phone to see what the weather was like at the beach areas where it was in the 80s. So I made a mental note to self in the future, Labor Day weekend, Southern California, the only place to go is the beach. This weekend for Labor Day, while we thought we would be going to the beach at one point, we had a whole bunch of friends of ours that ended up making reservations at a campground in the mountains by a lake. And then as we got closer to Labor Day this week, one by one, everybody started to bail on the reservations because the weather there was going to be over 100 degrees. This morning we're on Highway 101. It's just after 9 a.m. I looked at my temperature on the dashboard thing. It's already 99 degrees and it's going to peak out in the hundreds somewhere. So, since our camping reservations have been canceled, we're going to go with what our plan A should have been all along. We're driving to Santa Barbara, California, and we're going to spend the day on the beach. First stop for us was strolling along Cabrillo Boulevard with the ocean to our left, along with the Santa Barbara Arts and Crafts Show. Held every Sunday throughout the year, local artisans display their wares for sale. You can find one-of-a-kind paintings, sculptures, pottery, photography. Nearly every medium of art is represented at the show in the dozens and dozens of pop-up tents and tables. Sellers have to live in Santa Barbara to participate. We always enjoy browsing the items for sale when the show is in season during our trips to Santa Barbara. It's a beautiful kaleidoscope. It sparkles. It's really beautiful. Carol Chase and Pearl Chase. The Chase Palm These guys are my They're sister and brother who contributed to Santa Barbara's beauty and welfare, including establishing this park. These are like emergency parachute, uh, what, what's the cord called? Para parachute, cord. parachute cord. Yeah. So these are used like when you're back, back camping? You'll find the show between Stearns Wharf and Calle Cesar Chavez. Show hours are from 10 a.m. until dusk. Oh, and the browsing is free. After the arts and crafts show, we wandered up State Street and headed over to the Santa Barbara Visitor Center. I'm gonna say, we're supposed to be here to cool down, right? It's not, it's not cool. This is your go-to place to get up-to-date information on activities from attractions to museums, bike rentals, guided tours, and current events. It's also a great place to book a wine tour, sunset cruise, or whale watching excursion. There's plenty of free brochures and maps to help you plan things to do in the area. Here we have books from local authors in the Santa Barbara area. They are uh, very prominent at this visitor center and on the art walk that we just took. I think they treasure their local artists here. Everything with the logo is made here. He does uh -huh. the totes for us. <laughs> he does the baby stuff. It's literally four blocks from here. Nathan's uh -huh. company is Addicted Lifestyle. Yeah. Uh -huh. Our jewelry is done here. Free local women. Our cards. Locally yeah, that's done. awesome. I really, I really, I appreciate that. Yeah, we don't live locally. Just for but, a better visitor yeah. takeaway. Yeah. And inside, the carefully curated mercantile has items for sale produced by locals from the area, from books to souvenirs, including glasses, shirts, craft items, jewelry, and more. We drove our car to Santa Barbara, but many people enjoy taking the train. Two Amtrak trains travel to the city. The Pacific Surfliner can get you here from San Luis Obispo to the north and from San Diego to the south and from multiple cities in between. 
And to make it easier to get around Santa Barbara, the Pacific Surf Liner offers complimentary transfers to your final destination via Santa Barbara buses and electric shuttles. The train stops within steps of State Street where you can depart the train and start exploring the city. State Street is the heart of Santa Barbara's downtown area. An entertainment, dining, and retail district has been transformed since the COVID era into a 10-block pedestrian walkway between Sola and Gutierrez streets. State Street is a great place to stroll, browse, shop, and dine while admiring the Spanish-style architecture of Santa Barbara. Did we say the weather was hot? That means a stop inside the ice cream store. So many choices and so much for our plan to escape the heat. At least we can get something refreshing at the ice cream store. They have smoothies. They have functional smoothies, whatever that means. Oh, it has, it has supplements. And they have, oh man, they have tons of smoothies and they have ice cream. The bee stinger for me, blueberry, banana, bee pollen, protein, and Julie got? Peach and pineapple with, with bee pollen. That'll work. It's very good. All right, there you go. So this is the way we do things in California, you know, you're not allowed to have plastic straws because it's really bad for the environment. So we've got paper straws but is what they give apart. you. Yeah, falling apart, but it goes into what, Julie? Plastic. Plastic cup. <laughs> I don't get it. <laughs> it's been at least two decades since we visited the Santa Barbara Museum of Art, and it seems the perfect choice on this day of 100 degree temperatures. Stepping inside to escape the heat, we learn about a docent-led tour starting within 20 minutes of our arrival. At the Santa Barbara Art Museum, admission here is $10 for adults, $6 for seniors. The entry foyer has a great collection of salon art, and this is where our docent-led tour started. What most people don't know about a sculpture like this is it's made from black basalt, which is an incredibly hard stone Guess what? Sometimes it would take three generations to create a sculpture like this. Meaning a sculptor would start carving on this in basalt and his child would take over and do spend a whole lifetime doing this and even the grandchild would finish a sculpture like this. Can you imagine that? Three generations because the stone is, stone is so hard. This museum holds 25,000 works of art with classical antiquities only rivaled on the west side by the J. Paul Getty Museum. You can see masterpieces of French Impressionism, and no West Coast museum owns more paintings by Monet. The permanent collection includes arts from all over the globe. This room had an exhibit of Greco-Roman images in photography. This room showcased Asian art with a great collection representing China. We even saw a work by Charles M. Russell. If you watched our videos from last year's trip to Montana, his name should be familiar. <laughs> Julie's back here looking at this painting. It's a <laughs> she said, I said it's, oh look, a Matisse. And I said, Matisse, isn't that a dog? <laughs> You said it's a, No, that's a Maltese. A Maltese. So, I don't know anything about art. <laughs> Other than it's my, my name. <laughs> if you love art, make sure to visit the Santa Barbara Museum of Art. We really enjoyed our visit here this time, and a tip, you'll get more out of your experience if you time your visit with a docent-led tour. We pass by the Libero Theater. It's the oldest continuously operating theater in California and the fourth oldest performing arts theater in the country. From orchestras and ballet to contemporary music, you can enjoy it at the Libero Theater. It's also been years since we visited El Presidio de Santa Barbara, so we made a return visit here. It's one of the most significant landmarks in Santa Barbara. It's also the site of an active archeological dig. 
Founded in 1782, the Royal Presidio was the last of four military fortresses built by the Spanish along the western wilderness frontier. The original fort was surrounded by an outer defense wall that boasted two cannon bastions. After a strong storm in Santa Barbara, Nolan Harter saw something in the exposed bedrock as he was jogging along Goleta Beach Park in 1982. What he saw peeking above the surface of the sand were five cannons, the guns of Goleta. Many of the artifacts on display come from the archaeological digs at the site. There are three major structures here. Most of the buildings are carefully researched reconstructions. You can visit the living quarters used by the lieutenant as well as the soldiers. Behind the north wing, we walked among the orchards and viewed the archeological site of the Presidio's outer defense wall. The chapel was the first in Santa Barbara for local town residents. We're at the Presidio in Santa Barbara. We're standing inside the chapel area. This room was reconstructed in 1985, and it turns out that the side of this chapel sits on the grounds where the Japanese Buddhist temple was constructed in 1929. So there is a, a mishmash of some history. This is a place where residents who were here would have prayed three times a day. It's also the sacred space where important events would happen, weddings, funerals, daily prayer, and reconstructed here at the Presidio in Santa Barbara. In the reconstruction of the Presidio, students and other archeologists have been making adobe uh, to to reconstruct a lot of these buildings. So there's piles of it over here that they've already made. And next to the post office is El Cuartel, the oldest surviving Presidio structure. There's also a display about the Japanese community who resided in the Presidio sector including the unfortunate treatment that transpired during World War II. It's a history we've been bumping into very frequently during our last two years of travel and worthy of remembrance. Last time we visited Santa Barbara, we came to the Santa Barbara Cemetery hoping to visit the gravesite of silent film actress Virginia Cheryl. But during that visit, COVID had the mausoleum closed. Today, we're able to get inside. Virginia Cheryl is best remembered for portraying the blind flower girl in Charlie Chaplin's film, City Lights, and once married to the ninth Earl of Jersey, it was she, Lady Jersey in England, who befriended my father, who found refuge from war-torn Poland as a member of the Royal Air Force Academy, and a lifelong connection happened. She moved to Santa Barbara in 1948 and lived there until her death in 1996. She meant a lot to my family and it was fitting to stop here and pay our respects. We came here to the Santa Barbara Cemetery during the midst of COVID with the intention of coming to the gravesite of Virginia Cheryl. And unfortunately at that time we couldn't get in because they had the mausoleum completely closed for COVID. So we're here today, a little bit after the prior visit and the mausoleum doors are open. And we uh, finally made it to see Chocha, as she was known in our family again. And her husband. And her husband, Lorian Martini. The souls of the righteous are in the hand of God. I have never seen anything like this. So they're, they're in separate boxes behind glass. The urns, a lot of them look like books with their names and their birth and death year. 
I've never seen anything displayed like this. At the end of the day, it's time for dinner at Brophy Brothers. It's a great place for local seafood featuring a clam and oyster bar, and we love the views of the harbor. So while we didn't escape the heat, we had a great day in Santa Barbara. And like always, we'll be sure to return for more adventures in this great California city. Thank you.